mirror and not like right. really that good because actually I've been feeling the opposite way since I got for example this thing done because I slept for four hours and I felt like I feel like shit but then I looked at the mirror and I was really I was looking better than when I slept twenty hours before. Oh wow, that's good. <laughs> I think, you know, it's like anything else. I don't, I think what you believe should be something you can believe, but you don't have to proselytize around the rest of the world. So it's an individual decision. I think people that make judgments against others, I, th I don't think that's right. Everyone's got something to say, and people can be very nasty. If you look at the internet, you see that all over the place, people criticizing everybody for what they do. But I think you have to look at yourself and criticize yourself first and see how you feel about yourself. So I don't think people should criticize it. I think it's, uh, if that's your belief, that you want to look natural, that's fine, but don't impose your beliefs on others. That's how we're starting everything, not because of cosmetic surgery, but I think that's one of the biggest problems in the world, <laughs> is people trying to impose their beliefs on others, and all it does is create discord in the universe and creates problems. If you really just stick to your own principles and, you know, uh, look at yourself first before you look at somebody else and say, what's good for me? And that may be great for me, but maybe the other person doesn't feel that way. And let them do what's good for themselves. So I think people that try to impose their beliefs on others are wasting a lot of energy and putting a lot of, out of, a lot of bad energy out there. You know, besides my interest in art and all my work and everything, I'm into yoga and all these type of things too. So I do have a spiritual side. <laughs> Joe, don't laugh. <laughs> But I do, so, uh, but I really believe, you know, people, it's an individual decision. Definitely. Um, oh, yeah, I wanted to ask you about this. You were talking about yoga. Yes. And I've read about your routine. Right. A lot, like, it's very specific. Yeah, very, right I'm very disciplined. I'm a little OCD, but that's okay. It works for me. I'm not saying you have to be that way, just like everything else. Um, so because I, I'm a believer, too, that... You know, you can do everything to your face, but if you don't take care of your body and your health, what's the sense, right? You want to, it should be all, it's one package. So I'm a big believer in health. I eat very well. I do yeah, yoga. Yeah, I was going to ask about that. Yeah. It's like, your routine, like, remind me a lot to, like, the, oh, sorry, the routines of artists, like, I don't know, like, Eric Satie or me, or philosophers like Nietzsche, like, a very specific thing every day, and that's... So yeah, I like, that that I like consistency yeah. in my life. I really do. And do you think that, do you really, like, advocate routine as a healthy thing? Or do you travel a lot? I don't, you know, I don't take enough vacation. I was just saying to my friend Rich, i got to start taking more vacation. But I do like routine and I do like my work. Uh, I should do more things. I should, I should really travel more and break up my routine. But when I'm working, I find it's very good to be on a schedule. Like, I'll get up at 6.30 every morning and I'll do yoga till like, 8.15. No, a quarter, six or seven, no, a quarter to eight. And then I'll have my specific, I'll do my green juice, you know. I know it sounds very boring, but I'll do my green juice. And believe me, I don't want to get up at 6.30. I know if I don't do that and I don't get up at 6.30, it's not going to happen because I never know what time I get home from the office. <laughs> and, but I think, you know, by taking care of myself, you know, and then I think I'm a healthier person. I can better do whatever I'm supposed to do. Because, and I feel better about myself. But that's not to say somebody else may not do it and feel good about themselves anyway. Um, what about uh, diet? Like, what's, do you have a specific diet? For I do. I do have one to avoid migrants, and it's tailored for me. I wonder okay. if you had something. I don't have a bad issue, but I do. I try to watch. I'm a sugar addict, I must say. I oh, think sugar too. is so addictive, so I try to cut that down. I eat dark chocolate because I, you know, have my. You know, everyone rationalizes and say, well, at least I'm getting my polyphenols and antioxidants. It was over seventy percent. You know, I have a way to rationalize it. But I do a lot of juicing with green juices. I don't eat any red meat because I believe that causes inflammation and aging. So I want to do, you know, I want to help myself from the inside. I'm very big into my vitamins. I take a lot of fish oils, a lot of krill oil, um, glycidine, all these anti-inflammatory things. Um, and I'm gluten-free because I think that also cuts down on inflammation. I feel much better. I don't have celiac disease, but I feel much better eating gluten-free. And I keep my weight very good. And I, uh, you know, so I think that all helps. And gluten-free is the best thing. You know why? Because when you go out to dinner, you can't eat any of the bread. And that's what makes you 
getting the most weight is eating those breads before your dinner, right? So that's a great reason alone to be gluten-free. Avoiding all the bread they serve you in a restaurant. Um, this is like a very simple question. Yes. What's your star sign? Oh, I'm a cancer. Okay, that's very fine. sensitive. Let me clarify that. What's yours? Capricorn Aquarius. Uh -huh. so we're, a cusp. Oh, you're a cusp. Okay. But I'm a typical cancer. I believe in astrology. I know I'm going to all these crazy things. I'm, I believe in astrology. I have this verdict astrology, you know, Indian astrology. And they plot your whole map out for your life. It's very interesting. I'm not saying I my cover my whole life. She made my astro chart. Uh, like, maybe I can talk to you later. Yeah, <laughs> we should. She, we did yoga together. Oh, um, great. And we were saying that our dream would be to actually be waked up in the 6 in the morning and do yoga and have uh. our dreams. So. Oh, you can come live with me. <laughs> then you'll do it. You'll have no choice. Um, talking about the, the headaches and migraines and all that, I've heard of this Botox. Okay, yeah, we what do. Is that? Okay, well, you know, Botox is like the most amazing drug that came along in the mid '90s, and it really changed the course of cosmetic dermatology because it awakened, before that we were doing collagen injections, but when people saw what Botox could do and how it could elevate, not just eliminate lines, but change the shape of your face. We do a lot of facial shaping with it, we lift the eyebrows. People, I just had a new patient today, what we're doing so much now is the masseter, the chewing muscle hypertrophy. You know, all these women are clenching in New York because it's so stressful, so what happens is, it's true. I said the only one that should be grinding their teeth the only ones that you grind are strippers because they're getting paid for it. But if you're grinding yourself, it's not good. You know, it creates too many, you're wearing, that, and you know, it costs a lot of money. You wear down your teeth, and you know, I can do stand up. I'm available for winning. <laughs> but seriously, um, what happens is the muscles in your so this patient said, how do you know I'm a grinder? I said, I can tell by the size of your jaw muscles. It's very common in especially Asia. So what we do with Botox is we can actually inject the masseter muscle and we can slim women's faces and men's faces down so it looks really good and it saves your teeth at the same time. So it's medical and cosmetic. But migraines, okay, getting back to migraines. So migraines afflict a lot of people. And I've treated several patients of mine for, you know, I have this one lady, she still comes to me. She had a migraine every day of her life. She went to headache clinics everywhere. The only thing that helped were Botox injections. And you can actually trace out where their migraines occur because you can feel the tension in the muscle. And you can feel, it's, not, it's a completely different sensation. And when you inject Botox, no one knows exactly the mechanism, but Botox interferes with transmission of pain fibers, of impulses along pain fibers. So it's thought that it affects pain fibers. We also use it to treat certain pain conditions, like people have had herpes, herpes zoster, or shingles, they sometimes have pain afterwards. You can actually inject those fibers and decrease the pain. So the same thing with migraines. It may also have to do with muscle relaxation, but it really changes people's lives. I have a few nurses that have the problem, and it really, really affects them quite nicely. I mean, for example, I was having a very bad migraines last week, and I realized that, like, a specific, like, right, like, muscle there, and it's like, I, I really thought about it. Yeah, it works quite nicely. But you know, I would, if I could just bring something up, we were talking about changing faces of beauty and art, and it's so interesting because in my, I do a lot of, well, not a lot, but I do a decent amount of lectures, and when you lecture about facial aesthetics, you know, there's a lot of mathematical principles, and it applies to art as well as, you know, if you look at Leonardo da Vinci and all these artists, they always apply these mathematical principles to their painting, where there's this rule of pi. You've heard about the ratio of A plus B. A is to B is A plus, A plus B is to A. It's, you have to look at the figures. I don't have a diagram to show you. But, and then there's this rule of thirds and fifths in the face where you can dive the face up. So a lot of those I use as principles. But I think a lot, I've been a visual, very visual person all my life. So I think a lot of it's an instinctive thing too. When you look at somebody, you just know what to do to make them look better. I mean, you can think about all these ratios and things, but a lot of, I think a lot of my work comes from my instinct appreciation, my visualization of people and how I visualize them, they should look better. And we talked about how you want to maintain continuity of youth, but also in my practice, I always try to make people look a little better. Because no matter what women say, I want to look the same. I'm not going to put them in the witness protection program. <laughs> You know, the FBI has sent them to me. You know, sometimes we get a few cases from the CIA and we've got to transform them. 
But seriously, <laughs> only kidding. Anyway. <laughs> So, but seriously, I always say no woman doesn't want to look pretty, right? I mean, I'll restore them to where they look, but you know, a little enhancement would be better too. Like I had a young woman today, and she came in for her lines from her nose to her mouth. I said, that's not what you need. She was very hesitant. She had no cheekbone here. I said, let's give you a little cheekbone. It'll look better, and it'll lift the lines. And she did it, and she was so happy. So, you know, we can also improve on Mother Nature too, besides maintaining youth and we can also enhance a little bit too. Yeah, and also I'm very interested in the, the fact that it's like so subtle. Like right. You said like many, many interviews that people would like, like their mates would work with us and like cut their hair or like something like that. Right, a lot of people don't know what they've had done. Right, right, right. Yeah, a lot of people come in and they're so worried because they're worried about looking like a different person. But you know, it's like anything else, you only notice People that they're worried about looking like, you only notice people that have maybe not the best job or best cosmetic work, so you notice it, but you don't notice all the subtle cases. So people say, oh, I don't want to do that because I'm going to just like the lips. You know, everyone notices, people don't realize as you get older, your lips get smaller and a little lip enhancement can be nice. I'm not going to make you look like a porn star. You know, really. But so, you know, unless you want to, I mean, you know. <laughs> You know, some people need the business, but whatever. <laughs> but seriously, you know, subtle enhancements. And sometimes, you know, you have all these crazy examples of people walking around and you want to, you have to try, a lot of times you have to convince people that you can do things naturally. Mm -hmm. I had the best one, I had a patient come in a few months ago, and she was 50 years old, and I said, you know, and I say to my patients, don't worry, I'm going to make you look natural. And she goes to me, honey, at 50, I don't care about natural. This makes me look good. <laughs> so I wanted to ask you about your background. Yes. Because, I mean, for example, in my case, I grew up in a very, kind of like a Latino household where right. my mom would be very traditional and so, so beauty. Like, she would criticize people like, oh, she's fat. Oh, she doesn't like to wear legs or whatever. Um, she was very specific about right. noses, about um, boobs, everything. Not my house. So, yeah, I wanted to know, like, what about you? How were you brought up? Like, how was the environment in your house in relation to your work now? Well, it, it really didn't involve my work now. I was kind of different from everybody in my house, as you can imagine. You know? <laughs> I was the visual one, and I was always thinking outside the box, even when I was a child. I was taking everything apart. I always wanted to know how everything worked. I remember I took phonographs apart, once through the, you know, caused a power outage in my whole building. Of I was exploring the electrical system. So I was very curious. So I was more visual and interested in the way things looked and more than so than anybody else in my family. Nobody really criticized people's appearances or I was probably more sensitive to appearance than anybody else in my family. So in a sense, I can't say that any of that came from externally. I think some of it was just innate in me. Does that make any sense? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, then, oh yeah, this is a very like surrealist scenario, maybe, but sure. uh, thinking if like the health system was like a public, like in England, for example, right. like the NHS, um, do you think that certain plastic surgeries should be included in the NHS, or do you think that it would be very like have I think that would, or? I think that would create so much chaos. First of all, the health system, healthcare system, is so much chaos already. They have enough to deal with in just creating treating people's diseases. I think this is more of elective, and I think we should take private pay. Because if the healthcare system got involved, I guarantee all the cost of all these procedures would skyrocket, and because the insurance companies that have to make their money would tack on all these costs, and I think it would be crazy. Keep the insurance companies out of it, please. You know the richest people in America are the insurance companies. We don't want to make them any richer getting off of cosmetic procedures. <laughs> 